So for our geometry exam, we got to review that chapter eight we did out of our algebra one book at the beginning of the year. Um, in the first four problems here, um, the numbering is weird, I know, but the thing that I started with, every one of these has got the parent function because we're supposed to graph the function that's given and then compare it to the parent. So the first thing that I did was just set the parent function up on all of these. There's the table for the parent. That definitely is something you want to make sure is on your note cards. What is the parent function's value so you don't have to go, you know, graphing it every time. Now, when I do number three here, the function was g of x equals x squared plus six. If you are just getting at this, my recommendation to you is you just focus on the table of values and you can come back and do your graphing. Uh, from negative two, I went up to ten. Negative one went up to four, five, six, seven, zero, six, and then it's repeated over here. What's going on with this? Well, this parent function of x squared, when we did x squared plus six, all that happened was, because it says compare, so g of x is the parent up translated up to up six, translated up six. So there's three parts here. Get your parent, get your new one, and then what happened? Um, in number four, I got the table of values right here. This plus eight in number four is gonna make every point. And I'm actually gonna use what we did for, uh, I'm gonna, I got the table of values, but it's just gonna move every point up eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm just gonna move every point up eight units. My table of values follows with that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this is gonna bring this over here. This one's gonna be here. So in this one, x squared plus eight, g of x is the parent translated up eight. Is the parent translated up eight? Now in number nine, I've got a two times the x squared and I've got a minus four. My vertex is gonna go down four and this two times the x squared is gonna make it narrower if I remember right. Here's my table for number nine, it's sitting right here. Again, get your tables of values if nothing else and then you can go back and graph. So what happened to this one? G of X is narrower than the parent and it is translated down four. G of X is narrower than the parent and translated down four. Now number 10. We have a negative that's gonna flip it over the x-axis. We've got a three that's gonna make it skinnier. Then we have a plus one that should move the vertex up one. I got the table of values for number 10 right here. I'm gonna plot those. Oh, I can't even plot negative two, negative 11, negative one, negative two, zero, one. That vertex moved up one one, negative two. It's kind of an overlap of the vertices here. What happened with this is it was a reflect G of X is the parent reflected over X and then translated up one. The parent reflected over X axis, then translated up one. All right, um, this video will go public. You guys are gonna need to take some time with that, I am certain. Um, numbers three and four down here, find the vertex. The vertex here is sitting at two and negative one. Don't forget you guys, axis of symmetry is just the vertical line that goes through the vertex. It's x equals whatever that x value of the vertex was. I'll come to y-intercept in just a second. I'm gonna pull this vertex. That one's at negative three, two. It's axis of symmetry will be x equals negative three then. And then when I wanna look at these and say, where are they hitting the, where is it, uh, what's the last piece? Y-intercept of the graph. This hits the y-axis at one. 
Um, and y intercepted this graph that hits the y axis at negative one. So that was those two. These were just look and figure out what it is. There is a little calculation for y intercept, or for vertex, I mean, and your axis is symmetry. I'm gonna go to the next page. Here's the formula. Okay, so this is the good stuff. Geez, I was doing my algebra two and I thought these problems were on there. So no, this is you guys. Find the axis of symmetry and the vertex of the graph of the function. The axis of symmetry equation is x equals opposite of b over 2a, and our functions have to be in standard form to get that, and that's ax squared plus bx plus c. So we grab what those are. So for number seven, my a is 2, that's the number that's multiplied by x squared. My b is negative 4. I don't need a c, but in this case it would be 0 if I had one. So the axis of symmetry then for this one is going to be, the, num the denominator is going to be 2 times my a value of 2. The numerator is the opposite of negative 4. So that's going to be 4 over 2. The x value of my vertex is going to be 1. And then what do I do to get the y value of the vertex? Well, if I know my x value of the vertex, oh, that's the axis of symmetry. We'll come back to that, but it's also, so the AOS equation is x equals one. The vertex is x axis is one. And then what I'm gonna do now to find out the y value of the vertex, cause that's what part B wants, I'm gonna go plug in one for x 2 times 1 squared minus 4 times 1 is just going to be 2 minus 4. That's going to be a negative 2. Once I knew the x value of the vertex, I just plugged it into the function to find out what the y value of the vertex was. That's A, that's B. One more for problem 9. Same thing. So what's my A value, B value? I've got an A of negative 9. I've got a B of negative 18. My C would be negative one. It doesn't come into play when I go do the axis of symmetry. Denominator is gonna be two times the A of negative nine. Numerator is gonna be the opposite of negative 18. I think we're in the same boat here. A positive 18, oh no, positive 18 over negative 18. X value of the vertex or the axis of symmetry equation is X equals one. So AOS, X, I'm sorry, negative one. And then to go find out what the vertex is, so then my vertex has got the X value of negative one. I'm gonna go plug that into my function. Y will be equal to negative nine times negative one squared minus 18 times negative one minus one. And when I go in my calculator to find out what that is, I'm gonna get, my y value of the vertex to be eight. So make sure that you can handle those two tasks. So part A, part B, y value of the vertex eight. Teddy Gordon. Not here. Okay. All right, now one more thing that you wanna have on your notes, um, and I couldn't, I don't know why, today, this morning, I had a hard time finding some of my notes, but I remembered that we had the idea about these odd, even, or neither in terms of a function. We had a chart, and I highly recommend that you find this in your stuff, because if a function is odd, it has rotation symmetry around the origin, it can be turned. If a function is even, it's got reflection symmetry around the y-axis, and if a function is neither, it has neither reflection or rotation symmetry. So we classify as odd, even, or neither. This again is in your stuff. What do I got here? So I'm gonna just go into my calculators y equals. For each one of these, I'm just gonna go looking at them. Four x plus three. If I hit a graph there, that one's gonna be neither because it doesn't hit, it's not symmetric around anything, nor can I turn it. Number six is three X squared. That should be, that should be reflective. That should be even. Sure is, I can fold it on the uh, Y axis. Number six is even. Number seven is five to the X. So I have to actually go five carat X then plus two. I don't think this one's gonna be anything either. Nope, that one's neither. That's a, a, 
power function and it's not symmetric or rotational. 2x squared minus 7x is my next one. This is going to be a parabola, and I'm thinking that this one is probably going to be neither. I don't think this parabola can fold. Nope, I was, I knew it was going to get moved. That one's going to be neither. Negative x squared plus 8. I think this one's going to be even. Negative x squared plus 8. Should open down, hit the y-axis at eight, sure does. That one's even, it can be folded. And then last but not least, negative a half x. That's gonna go, I think that's gonna be um, odd. I think it's gonna be rotational. One divided by two x, as long as it goes through, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, that one's gonna have turn symmetry around the origin, so that would be an example of our odds. Now, um, I'm, again, this would be in your chapter eight notes. I feel like this is even stapled to your chapter eight notes packet if I remember right. From section eight six, make sure you've got I pictures about these. Number five, this guy's gonna be a quadratic, it's a parabola. Number six is what we call an exponential curve. Again, with your notes from this, it's been since the September and October since we did this. You guys might want to make sure that you're drawing these into your onto your uh, cheat sheet, your yellow card. And then what's going on in eight? This guy's a linear. Actually, you could put any of these as examples on your uh, cheat sheet as well. That'd be perfectly fine. And then the other thing with deciding if something is odd, even, uh, I'm sorry, linear, exponential, or quadratic. Here we are making choices again, and I'm stuck back on the other. Linear, exponential, or quadratic. Um, I had looked through some of these. I'm just going to remind you guys that the first thing we want to do, and I already looked at this, all of my x values are going by 1. And if I'm going to check out a rate of change is either linear, quadratic, or exponential, I do want my x values all to be going by 1. So that's cool with these. When I look at number 15's y values, what I can see is that they're going up a half every time. And when we did this in class, I remember asking you to kind of work backwards in your table. What's 2 minus 1.5? You know, and that undoes what happened. Because this has a constant rate of 0.5, we'd call that linear. Now, I did some division here, 125 divided by 25. I saw this as being multiples of stuff. And when I looked at it, I thought, this might be multiples of 5. And I went into my calculator and took 0.2 times 5, and I sure did get 1. I knew it was multiples of five from what I noticed here. One times five, five times five. If these are all multiples, multiplying by five each time, when we have a common multiple like that, that's an exponential. Double check on this one too. This one was tripling each time. When I have a constant multiple again, exponential. And then 18 took me a couple minutes. I couldn't find any multiplier. And then I started looking at, ah, you know what? There's something about, this one's a quadratic. And this is probably something you guys aren't going to remember until I bring it up here. These are all going up, but check it out. It's going up a little bit more every time. Those guys are called the first differences right there. Those are our first differences. Howdy, Cord. All right, now for quadratics, sorry about that, you guys. With quadratics, like this was not, again, not a constant multiplier, and when I did the change here, I didn't have a linear, but what I did notice is that once I got those first differences, remember if the second differences are conference, con second diffs are constant. In a linear, it's the first diffs, but if the second diffs are constant, we call that a quadratic.